Hello all you wonderful people, this is Angel here and we are resuming our let's play of TFT Siri Imagined with Battle 1 Mission 2. So this mission has a kind of special place for me because this is the very first mission that I actually ever reimagined. So a bit of backstory, when I first played the old TFTC, the first version release back in 2005, or at least that version of it uh, a few years later, um, Our interrogation this mission was one that struck me of just how different uh, the engine is and how, how to say it, I suppose how, how what the engine could do potentially if uh, if we modified the mission. Because the original mission, when you play it through this, it's 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 okay, but it's not a lot really happens. And the whole point here is that you're under attack um, from numerous rebel and pirate forces. Um, and I think you should, it should feel like your your back's to the wall, that you're really under pressure here, but the original mission doesn't make me feel that, at least not in the X-Wing Alliance version. So, yeah, this, this mission is what actually spurred me to start doing TFTC, at least, you know, back then. So I started twi uh, tweaking the mission, I started adding more ships, more waves, and I really wanted to create that feel that you were really under the gun, backs to the wall, pressures on you, and extreme prejudice. Yeah, just create this real big spectacle of uh, a fight uh, before you're saved at the very end by the Star Destroyer Hammer. Who serve the Empire. But a couple of years later, when I started coming back to TFTC and started doing stuff a bit more uh, in depth, uh, I started thinking about you know doing the other missions. And then I kind of realised. Looking at Battle 1 as a whole, will be rewarded. narratively speaking, there were things that didn't quite make sense for me, or at least there were some logic loopholes, if you will. So, I mean, towards the end of Battle 1, you're basically engaging a rebel cruiser. What happened to the Star Destroyer Hammer? Why, why doesn't the Star Destroyer Hammer help you out here? That, that, that Star Destroyer should crush an MC-40, uh, rather, sorry. In preparation for an assault... So, yeah. I wanted to basically change the narrative to account for what's happening to the ships that you're seeing on screen, the capital ships, certainly. Um, and in this mission, I actually add more capital ships. Well, I add two more anyway. So, because you get the modified frigate Fogger, which actually pops up as a normal frigate in uh, Battle 1 Mission 3 in the Classic, and then this is suddenly a modified frigate in Battle 4. But again, this frigate just appears and disappears. No, no narrative reason is given, it's just there and then it's not. And that bothered me. Um, and so, yeah, a, a big part of Reimagine for me, at least doing this, was uh, making the TIE Fighter story have more consistency to it in the little details, like the capital ships that you see on screen. What happens to them? Why, why are they there? Why are they not there? Um, and in doing this, because I added two Lancer frigates to this battle as well, I also have to account for them as well. Um, so when the hammer comes in, in the original classic version of this mission, at the end of the mission, the hammer on its own arrives to basically relieve you. Now instead you've got the hammer, the modified frigate Vogger, and then two Lancer frigates which I named Fowler and Slicer. And then going forward, I made sure to account in the story what happens to these ships or what's going on with them every step of the way. And I'll cover it more in the other missions as we go forward, but just to say that, for example, the hammer will be with you in mission three instead of just the frigate fogger. And in mission four, it'll be the fogger and the hammer comes afterwards. I have to kind of give a little narrative reason why the hammer didn't just come back to D34. And then mission five and mission six. Um, why isn't the hammer attacking with you along with the fogger? But as I said, I'll, I'll cover that a bit more uh, when we get to those missions uh, about the narrative of the story for Battle One. Any incoming torpedoes before they hit D34. So the mission kind of starts off pretty similar to the original one, at least you know for the first minutes anyway. Um, you get six rebel Y-wings come in that will attack the station, and then you have a bunch of uh, Mugari ships, except this time instead of using Y-wings and X-wings themselves, or at least Y-wings anyway, uh, I changed them to be pretty much Z-95s. Because I, 
one of the things about TIE Fighter, because of the limited ship selection, you just see the same ships being used over and over again by enemy factions. Quite often, Y-Wing is a popular choice for a pirate vessel, which kind of makes sense. I mean, it's an older uh, fighter design. Uh, but I wanted to change things up and shift how things go here. So the Rebel attack force is always focusing on the station, while uh, the Mugari attack force is engaging the enemy fighters. But being as you are in a very fragile TIE fighter, and X-Wing Alliance is a lot more uh, kinetic in its gameplay, I wanted to make sure that the player is not going to be just killed very easily. So at almost no point during most of the mission do the Mugari ships actually go for the player. It's only at the very end do they actually start tapping the player because, well, frankly, there's no one else left for them to target. Uh, this leaves the player able to concentrate on defending the station directly by engaging the Y-Wings. And other X-Wings and uh, transports that attack the station as well. So here you can see the modified Corvette Juno is actively shooting down the torpedoes. Again, this is something that doesn't happen in the original TIE Fighter, nor is the Corvette there in the original TIE Fighter. But I gave the Corvette a kind of a, a regular waypoint pattern, which just follows it around in a circle from the expected position of the attack. And this actually can change the dynamic of the battle quite a bit, depending on how quickly you deal with the Y-Wings uh, and other rebel ships and how what kind of position the Corvette is in in order to actually be able to shoot down those torpedoes. Sometimes it's in the perfect position to engage the rebel fighters as they fly by and the torpedoes and if you haven't shot down enough it's in the opposite part of its, part of its waypoint so it's much harder. And it's one of the very dynamic things about this particular mission I think that can really shift how it plays out. And it's also a nice fallback position for the player if they're feeling a bit uh, threatened. Because although I say these Mugari ships don't attack you, they will attack you if you decide to go and engage them. They'll, there's a good chance that they'll turn to engage you. One of the quirks about X-Wing Alliance is if you're attacking ships that aren't interested in you or don't have orders to attack you, you do a strafing run on them, they will actually turn to engage you sometimes, and that can surprise players because suddenly they're just being shot at um, with no real warning. This is quite true of the Y-Wings, for example, because uh, if a bomber that has ion cannons decides to engage you, it will use its lasers and ion cannons, and more often than not, you'll end up being disabled and then destroyed. So I should point out I'm playing on medium difficulty. It is not too hard doing it on this one. Uh, the hard version is, well, I wanted it to be hard. Uh, but we're still at the halfway point of the mission and it's still relatively easy going. We've still got control of the situation. We're holding the line, no real problems. And there's shuttle scuts. This is obviously the uh, original uh, part of the classic mission. This is the uh, first secret order mission you're given to inspect and then capture the shuttle, or at least uh, inspect it and then the AI will capture it. And my strategy is always to bring its shields down and then inspect it. You see the Corvette in the distance. Shooting torpedoes down. Epsilon has been dispatched to disable and capture it. 
So with so many more ships flying about, because obviously there's a lot more bombers, there's a lot more Bagari ships, you can see this is a reasonably intense battle going on. It feels like, yeah, this, this is a proper fight going outside the station. And you don't, you don't see too many of your friendlies. There are actually quite a lot of friendly ties flying about, but for the most part, they're dealing with the other Z95s. Wow! Okay, so Corvettes. In the original, I think it was two or three Corvettes come in kind of after you've completed the mission. It's like a little bonus objective, but in this case, I wanted this to be where the battle kind of switches up and you're put onto a much more defensive footing. And again, the, the, the position of the Corvette Juno kind of slightly changes things here, but for the most part, at this point, they arrive within gun range of the Corvette Juno and, yeah, pretty much waste it. There's a chance, though, depending on the position of the Juno and other fighters, that Juno can take out one of the Corvettes on its own. Not this time, though. But yeah, we've got nothing here that can take on five Corvettes. Um, their lasers start shredding up friendlies, and with less friendlies going on, uh, it becomes more harder and harder to uh, defend the station. Good kill. The trigger for the Corvettes arriving is 50% of the Mugari ships being destroyed. So again, if you decide, if the player decided to go and kill a lot more Mugari ships, these Corvettes arrive earlier, and that can shift how things go. You might still have to deal with a lot of rebel uh, bombers attacking the station and that makes your job a lot harder because now you've got the corvettes uh, covering them. So really it's in your interests to focus your efforts on the rebels and not the Megari. But at this point, as soon as the corvettes arrive, it's a timer for the, uh, the hammer and the other ships to arrive. And that's when that timer starts, is when the corvettes arrive. And it's just about basically when those ships arrive that you've kind of most, for the most part, run out of friendly forces and you are at a much greater risk of being uh, engaged by multiple Mugari fighters. And uh, <laughs> more than one occasion, in fact, on more than a dozen or so occasions, I get shot down at the last bit because I'm not paying attention because I'm more interested in watching the Hammer and her escorts come in and lay waste to the Corvettes. Here we go. The triumphant musical beat of Imperial capital ships arriving. Good work. You have fought well in defending D-34. And I, I've always enjoyed seeing this. I, I like big capital ships shooting at each other. And I wanted this fairly early in the uh, campaign. This triumphant moment. You've, you've fought hard and here we go. Now we're just going to town. And the Corvettes turn to flee, but it's it's too late. They they got nothing against that kind of firepower. It took a lot of effort to actually get this this little sequence to be just right, in my opinion, because you have to get the position of the Corvettes right, the position of the uh, Imperial ships just right. Um, the Corvettes themselves, before we balance them, were pretty much murder death machines to fighters and even large capital ships. Um, so in earlier versions of this, they were completely wiping out the Lancer frigates and the Rigate Fogger um, before they were destroyed, which I don't want. But yeah, when uh, version 1 of TFTC was released, uh, this mission was a bit too hard. Uh, there were a lot of complaints that it was just too hard for an early mission, especially in an unshielded TIE fighter, uh, so I had to tweak it a little bit. and. Uh, make it a bit easier. I added uh, the ability to call for reinforcements um, and uh, a few more friendlies here and there, adjusting some AI. Always a little tweaking, but I think it's in a pretty good position now. 
But yeah, this mission is completed. The very first reimagined uh, mission that I ever created. Battle 1, Mission 2, Red Alert. Alpha 2, you may return to the hammer's hangar. Yeah, I'm, I'm already in the hangar, mate. Ah, uh, here we go. The first Secret Order cutscene. Prepare to join the Secret Order of the Emperor. There we go. Our first little tattoo. I have a lot to say about the Secret Order stuff because there was uh, a lot we had to do there. But th this is one screen which... Uh, took a lot of pushing for us to get to work. Excellent work! Yeah, so initially when we were doing TFTC, we, I knew that we could probably trigger the cutscenes based on bonus points, but beyond that, I thought, well, there's no hope of actually having the arm tattoo itself being shown like you have in the original. But uh, we, we really, really wanted this feature, so myself and UL002 were really pushing uh, the community member, Jeremy, who does a lot of the, most of the uh, executable work and hooks uh, for the uh, X-Men Alliance upgrade project. We, we, we kept pushing and pushing, and eventually he came through and we were able to finally get the secret order working. Not exactly, obviously, if we'd like to see the original, because, um, yeah, the, the goals that we have for the secret order are primary goals. Now, I'll cover that in a, another video as to why we made that decision. Impressive for your first assignment. But, yeah, this... <laughs> when, we, when we finally got it, it was, it was a big win for us. It was a big breakthrough. Prove most useful to our operations in the future. So... Let's, let's go and have a look quickly at the, um, or let's have a look at the pilot wings first. Yes. Got my wings. But yeah, if we um, go and take a look at the metal case, there we go. There's our arm, there's our tattoo. Um, that arm is actually UL's arm, I think, just photoshopped in. And the metal case is actually shifted to the right hand side, whereas the original one was in the center. And basically what the arm tattoo is, is in X-Wing Alliance you have the Calador Crescent medal, which basically is in the center of the metal case uh, when you get it. And as you upgrade that medal, the medal itself progressively changes and gets more elaborate. Uh, without actually adding separate medals, and that's basically the perfect thing you want for the Secret Order Tattoo, because the Secret Order Tattoo basically gets more elaborate and upgrades itself as you get more higher ranks. So yeah, all, all, the, all the Secret Order Tattoo is, is the Calador Crescent just moved over here and on the uh, arm. And then all the other medals that you get throughout the campaign just end up going around and surrounding it. And that's another part of the hook that we pushed Jeremy for was because it, at the time we were limited to just having eight medals and the Calidor Crescent here, and we couldn't change their positions and we couldn't add more medals, but part of this hook allows us to have a lot more medals and change the positions of where the medals show up. And yeah, this, yeah, as I said, big win. We were very happy to get this into the mod and it's all the better for it. But that's it. That is Battle 1 Mission 2. Bit of a lengthy one, this one. Uh, I will be back with Battle 1 Mission 3, where we once again go into our favourite ship, the Thai Bomber, and blow up some rebel scum. So until then, take care, and good hunting. <laughs>